One of the things that makes my projects look as polished as they do in the end is that I go through every single shot and choose whether to assign movement to it. I crop everything so that way I redesign the composition if it needs it. Almost every single shot I do the slightest little adjustment to, especially when I'm using crop bars at top and bottom. It's pretty rare that I'll leave a shot 100% alone as far as how it's framed. When assigning movement to it, there's a couple of rules of thumb I want to mention and there's one little trick that I want to show you that a lot of people don't even know is there and it actually really helps a lot. In a world where nuclear war has begun, vampires fought back in super real 3D. I pulled up two shots here from the latest Trans Am project that I did. Now this is ungraded. These are not what the finished shots look like. This is straight out of camera right here. And what they are is two completely stagnant shots. I mean, this is just, that might as well be a photograph. Now granted, you're gonna pick up on the idea that there's a little bit of grain and structure moving through it when you blow it up and you're really looking at it. I filmed this intentionally with the idea of doing a little post zoom in or zoom out or choosing to possibly add maybe like a slide across it. It's not the same sensation as actually tilting the camera, like I'm sorry, tilting the cameras up and down or panning it left and right, but it's sometimes it's the safest thing to do to always get a completely locked down shot where you're not moving it at all and then have that decision later in post. So I'll usually try whether I want to do a, a tilt up and down or a pan and then I'll additionally get a completely locked down shot. In this edit that I just did for the Trans Am documentary, these are a couple of shots that totally made it in the edit and they were, I chose the locked down ones and assigned post zooming in or zooming out. Let's say that we have this shot and we wanted to start in closer and it's gonna zoom out. The pace of the zoom matters a lot. I do a very subtle zoom. It's very rare that I'll do a really exaggerated one. I'm only gonna do that if it's, there's some like power effect or it's something that needs to be super exaggerated or I wanna make it like cheesy, like old school zoom in. See your local dealer today and ask for a test drive in the all new Trans Am. Yes, the Phoenix has risen. And, uh... But in general, if I just want the footage to look slick, professional and highly produced, I like it to move like, like creeping. It's very subtle and played down. So let's say that this one was like 105, okay, in scale. Like right now it was 100, let's say it was at 105. And we'll go ahead and create a little keyframe here. And then I'm gonna slide that to the beginning of the clip. Double click in here and now I'm gonna create one that's 100. Hit enter, I've created a new key point, and I'm gonna slide that to the end of the clip. And so now we're gonna have basically what feels like a zoom out. So I'm gonna hit play, let's just see what that's doing for a second. So, it, sorry it's running a little choppy on you. It's because it's 6K raw footage, <laughs> and I am trying to record my screen at the same time, so it's, it's taxing the computer a bit. But let's try that again. So I would say on a clip like this, this is probably a little too slow. Let's drag this first one over that's the bigger size. Let's go ahead and make it like 108. I'll hit enter. And we're just assuming here that I wanted the clip to actually sit here this long. This is just an example. But let's see what this pace is like. That's about the pace that I like. Something like that. That's not, not super fast, very slow. I would do that or maybe even a little slower. Now here's the thing that I don't like unless you do something that I'm gonna show you. If you just have this keyframe, let's say, let's say it's gonna do the zoom out, and it, in this case it's gonna be faster because I'm just sliding these keyframes around, but let's say it just does this, watch this. And then it's just got a hard stop, right? Maybe it's the beat of the music and you need it to like stop zooming there. What you wanna do is not have it be such a hard, jerky stop. It looks very amateur. What you can do is you go up here, and you select your keyframes. You're gonna right click on them, and then you're gonna go down to temporal interpolation. And then you're gonna choose ease in or ease out. The, you can choose other ones, but these are the ones that I use. Ease in or ease out. We're going to do ease in, which might sound a little backwards, but we're gonna do ease in. And let's look at the result real quick, and then I'll explain why I chose ease in instead of ease out, even though it's at the the last keyframe. Okay, so we're watching it and, wow, that was better, right? 
Like that was even still a relatively fast zoom, faster than I'd like, because I've put these keyframes closer together than I normally would to scale that much distance of size. However, it still looks pretty smooth. Watch it again. Not bad. Let's compare it to the other way before. Before I put the, um, the ease in on there. Let's go. Meh. Now it's subtle, but it is there, I promise you. The other one looks like Windows Movie Maker, and this one looks like a decision by a seasoned editor. <laughs> Dare I say. All right, and the smooth ease in. Now, why is it ease in instead of ease out? I mean, maybe that makes sense to you right away. Adobe thought that made sense. But at first, I was trying to use these backwards. I kind of thought that'd be ease out because it was the, the last keyframe, like it, the ending keyframe to ease out. But in fact, you would ease out only when it's at starting the keyframe. So to give an example of ease out would be this first keyframe that we had. Let's say that it was actually it started while the clip was already playing. It didn't just start at the beginning of the clip, okay? So let's say that it started here. Well, that's gonna look bad if it just starts in the middle all of a sudden. So here we go, let's hit play. And then it just starts moving like really fast, but then it's still eased in. <laughs> it's gonna ease out of position and then ease in to a new position. So we want to select that keyframe, right click on it and choose ease out and then we can see what the result of that is gonna be. Now again, this is a pretty fast zoom. This is a faster zoom in out than I would use. It's exaggerated, but let's see how well it can do even in this circumstance. See how it gradually slid in and out? That was still, like, it was still so much better than if it was the other way. Let's do the other way again real quick. Right, it just started out of the blue, right? But this way, with our ease out going to ease in, it's gentle, it just smooths it out. Another example, we'll just do a sideways one. So let's just go ahead and zoom in a lot on this. This was the bike that they made. We'll just hop in there and get closer. When I'm resizing, a lot of times I'll go ahead and make my window like smaller so that way I can actually, and I'll click on motion and then I can see the size of the frame that I've sized it up to. And I can also get an idea of how much distance. Now my same rule of thumb applies here. I don't like it to go faster in, a, in the equivalent of a pan. I don't like it to go faster than you'd have to do in normal filming. If you're filming in 24 frames per second, you have to go somewhat slow or it's gonna start getting staggery. So I wouldn't take this all the way over here and then put the end point all the way over here. I'd probably do something subtle like, like this. I'd probably bring this up just a little, keep the wheel and show the ground. So let's say that's my starting point. I'd click on my little, keyframes, and then I'm gonna select those and drag them to the beginning. And then we're just gonna go, you know, roughly over here for a moment. I'm gonna click on motion again so I can see the size of my thing. And from here, if I want a perfectly straight line, rather than clicking on the actual video clip and then dragging it over, there's a really high probability that you're gonna accidentally shift it up and down just a little bit. And that's not necessary. I like like directly straight on or directly up and down. It, or directly diagonal, but I don't like it to just be like halfway, like a half thought, because it looks like a mistake. You have to dedicate yourself to the movement, is my opinion. I go ahead and go over here to position, and if you click on these numbers, you can click and hold down and drag, and then it's automatically gonna create your keyframe, but you can guarantee that you're only changing this axis and not the up and down, right? So I'm just gonna bring it over like maybe that much. And we can see how long the line is, so it's gonna travel that much distance. So it's a reasonably long clip, so maybe it could go a little further, let's just say that. Now this is just, uh, isn't what I necessarily would choose, I'm just trying to create it. So let's check out how it looks. So then it's just panning across. That, in addition to the grain of the filming, the noise in it, just that little speckle spackle that happens when you're looking at it close up, makes it feel like video rather than just being a photograph that you're zooming in, in and out across. But if it's just completely flat and just straight there, it almost looks too much like a photograph. So I like just a little bit of movement in most cases, but in a very subtle way. So the same rule applies here though for going back and forth. If we wanted this thing to stop in the middle, let's say, 
which is going to move a lot faster because I said they slow so close together. I would probably lessen the distance that I would make them travel from keyframe to keyframe and position points. But let's just leave it here for a second. We'll right click on it. We'll choose spatial, I'm sorry, temporal interpolation. And what would we choose? We would choose ease in or ease out. It's going to be ease in. All right, so we want to ease in to the new position. We would ease out of our starting position. Let's check out how different that looks. Well, we didn't even look at the first way, but you can see it kind of ease in. That was still, you can see, you can pick up on it. I'll do it without that method. And we can see it just come to a herky-jerky stop. It's like Windows Photo Gallery or something. It just looks lame. And again, if we wanted to have it start and stop all within the same clip rather than starting movement from the get-go, then we would want to assign this ease out to the beginning keyframes and an ease in to the ending keyframes. Again, we're easing out a position and then easing in to a new one. So ease in, and then we can see how that looks, where it would go from a completely stagnant picture style to having movement all of a sudden, and then to there. And that can be a good way to point to something specific about the product or whatever. It just depends on what's being said and what your purpose is. So I go through every single clip in an edit and do that. Um, in addition to assigning warp stabilizer and repositioning exactly like what the composition needs to be. This is actually an example of the shot color graded. So that's the way it looked in the final video. Color grading is a whole other animal. You can see all the effects that I have over here. I'm not using that one. I can just delete hit. There we go. And if we turn these off one by one, we'll get back to the raw straight out of cam look, right? So anyway. That is that. Every clip that's in your edit, make a decision whether there should or shouldn't be movement. If there should be, then, then use this method that we just described, that we just went through. If there shouldn't be, that's fine. But you might still want to reassign the position of it, you know, so that way it's a better composition. And that's a different video talking about composition. Anyway, if you found that helpful, awesome. You can give me a like, that would be greatly appreciated. As you can see, I don't have an enormous amount of plays happening on my channel. If you are curious to see why you might wanna to listen to what I have to say, um, my tutorials don't necessarily represent my final work. Please check out some of my actual professional work. I have playlists on my channel page and you can just see, uh, click on anything. Um, there's music videos, documentaries, promotional material. Hope that helped guys. Take care. By all means, feel free to subscribe if you would like. Hit the notification bell if you want to know when a new video is up. All right guys, take care.